Hello, beautiful. Welcome to another reading of Captain Frederick Marriott's Diary, published in 1839. Let's jump right in and see what the good captain is up to. The 4th of July, the 61st anniversary of American independence. Pop, pop, bang, pop, pop, bang, 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 bang. Mercy on us. How fortunate it is that anniversaries come only once a year. Well, the Americans may have great reason to be proud of this day, and we do, and of the deeds of their forefathers. But why do they get so confoundedly drunk? Why, on this day of independence, should they become so dependent upon posts and rails for support? The day is at last over. My head aches, but there will be many more aching heads tomorrow morning. What a combination of vowels and consonants have been put together what strings of tropes, metaphors, and allegories have been used on this day? What varieties and gradations of eloquence? There are at least 50,000 cities, towns, villages, and hamlets spread over the surface of America. In each, the Declaration of Independence has been read in all Let me describe what I actually saw. The commemoration commenced, if the day did not, on the evening of the 3rd, by the municipal police going round and pasting up placards, informing the citizens of New York that all persons letting off fireworks would be taken into custody, which notice was immediately followed up by the little boys proving their independence of the authorities by letting off squibs, crackers, and bombs, and cannons made out of shin bones, which flew into the face of every passenger, in the exact ratio that the little boys flew in the face of the authorities. This continued the whole night, and thus was ushered in the great and glorious day, illuminated by a bright and glaring sun, as if bespoken on purpose by the mayor and corporation. With a thermometer at 90 degrees in the shade, the first sight which met the eye after sunrise was the precipitate escape from a city visited with the plague of gunpowder of respectable or timorous people in coaches, carriages, wagons, and every variety of vehicle. My kingdom for a horse was the general cry of all those who could not stand fire. In the meanwhile, the whole atmosphere was filled with independence. Such was the quantity of American flags which were hoisted on board of the vessels, hung out of windows, or carried about by little boys, that you saw more stars at noonday than ever could be counted on the brightest night. On each side of the whole length of Broadway, were arranged booths and stands similar to those at an English fair, and on which were displayed small plates of oysters with a fork stuck in the board opposite in each plate. Clams sweltered in the hot sun, pineapples, boiled hams, pies, puddings, barley, sugar, and many other indescribable. But what was most remarkable, Broadway being three miles long, and the booths lining each side of it, in every booth there was a roast pig, large or small, as the center attraction. Six miles of roast pig, and that in New York City alone, and roast pig in every other city, town, hamlet, and village in the Union. What association can there be between roast pig and independence? 
let it not be supposed that there was any deficiency in the very necessary articles of potation on this auspicious day. No, the moose were loaded with porter, ale, cider, mead, brandy, wine, ginger, beer, pop, soda, water, whiskey, rum, punch, gin, slings, cocktails, mint juleps, besides many other compounds, to name which nothing but the luxuriance of American English could invent a word. Certainly, the preparations in the refreshment way were most imposing, and gave you some idea. Martial music sounded from a dozen quarters at once, and as you turned your head, you tacked the first bars of a march from one band, the concluding bars of Yankee Doodle from another. At last, the troops of militia and volunteers who had been gathering in the park and other squares made their appearance, well-dressed and well-equipped, all in honor of the day, marching as independently as they well could. I did not see them go through many maneuvers, but there was one which they appeared to excel in, and that was grounding arms and eating pies. I found that the current went towards Castle Garden, and away I went with it. There the troops were all collected on the green, shaded by the trees, and the effect was very beautiful. The artillery and infantry were drawn up in a line pointing to the water. The officers, in their regimental dresses and long white feathers, generals and aides-de-camp, colonels, commandants, majors, all galloping up and down in front of the line. White horses and long tails appearing the most fashionable and correct. The crowds assembled were, as American crowds usually are, quiet and well-behaved. I recognized many of my literary friends turned into generals and flourishing their swords instead of their pens. The scene was very animating. The shipping at the wharfs were loaded with star-spangled banners. Streamers paddling in every direction were covered with flags. The whole beautiful sound was alive with boats and sailing vessels, all flaunting with pennants and streamers. It was, as Ducrot would call it, a grand military and aquatic spectacle. Then the troops marched up into town again, and so did I follow them as I used to do the reviews in England when a boy. All oh, creation appeared to be independent on this day, some of the horses particularly so, for they would not keep in no line, not know how. Some preferred going sideways, like crabs. Others went backwards. Some would not go at all. Others went a great deal too fast, and not a few parted company with their riders, whom they kicked off just to show their independence. But let them go which way they would, they could not avoid the squibs and crackers. And the women were in some predicament. They might dance right or dance left. It was only out of the frying pan into the fire, for it was pop, pop, bang, bang, fizz, pop, bang, so that you literally trod upon gunpowder. And when the troops marched up Broadway, louder even than the music, were to be heard the screams of delight from the children at the crowded windows on each side. Ma, ma, there's pa! Oh, there's John. Look at Uncle on his big horse. The troops did not march in a very good order, because independently of their not knowing how, there was a great deal of independence to be contended with. At one time, an omnibus and four would drive in and cut off the general and his staff from his division. At another, a cart would roll in, insist upon following close upon the band of music, so that it was a mixed procession. Generals, omnibus, and four. Music, cartloads of bricks, troops, omnibus, and pair. Artillery, hackney coach, etc., etc. Notwithstanding all this, they at last arrived at the city hall, when those who were old enough and 
then it was, Be gone, brave army, and don't kick up a row. I was invited to dine with the mayor and corporation at the city hall. We sat down in the hall of justice, and certainly great justice was done to the dinner, which, as the wife says to her husband after a party where the second course follows the first with unusual celerity, went off remarkably well. The crackers popped outside and the champagne popped in. The celerity of the Americans at a public dinner is very commendable. They speak only now and then, and the toasts follow so fast that you have just time to empty your glass before you're requested to fill again. Thus, the arranged toast went off rapidly, and after them, anyone might withdraw. I waited till the thirteenth toast, the last on the paper to wit, the ladies of America, and having previously, in a speech from the recorder, bolted Bunkers Hill and New Orleans, I thought I might as well bolt myself, as I wished to see the fireworks, which were to be very splendid. Unless you are an amateur, there's no occasion to go to the various places of public amusement where the fireworks are let off, for they are sent up everywhere in such quantities that you hardly know which way to turn your eyes. It is, however, advisable to go into some place of safety, for the little boys and the big boys have all got their supply of rockets, which they fire off into the streets, some running horizontally up the pavement and sticking into the back of the passenger, and others mounting, slanting peculiarly, and Paul prying into the bedroom windows on the third floor or attics, just to see how things are going on there. Look in any point of the compass and you will see a shower of rockets in the sky. Turn from New York to Jersey City, from Jersey City to Brooklyn, and shower is answered by shower on either side of the water. Hoboken repeats the signal, and thus it is carried on to the east, the west, the north, and the south. From Rhode Island to the Missouri, from the Canada frontier to the Gulf of Mexico, at the various gardens and combinations were very beautiful and exceeded What with sea serpents, giant rockets scaling heaven, Bengal lights, Chinese fires, Italian suns, fairy bowers, crowns of Jupiter, Tartar temples, Vesta's diadems, magic circles, morning glories, stars of Columbia, and temples of liberty, all America was in a blaze. And in addition to this mode of manifesting its joy, all America was tipsy. There is something grand in the idea of a national intoxication. In this world, vices on a grand scale dilate into virtues. He who murders one man is strung up with ignominy, but he who murders 20,000 and has a statue to his memory and is handed down to posterity as a hero a staggering individual is a laughable and sometimes a disgusting spectacle. But the whole of the vast continent reeling, offering a holocaust of its brains for mercies vouchsafed, is an appropriate tribute of gratitude for the rights of equality and the leveling spirit of their institutions. All right, beautiful. That does it for I hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.